All right, let's talk about Dennis Dodd's latest article over at CBS Sports, and he has got the 2022 hot seat rankings. He's got eight college football coaches with their jobs on the line. That's either a ranking of five or four, and then there are some that are getting a little bit hotter as we go. Uh, Let's start off with the ones that are a five here, and I think that I agree with these. These are the two that it, it would be safe to say if they don't end up going you know, eight, nine wins this year, they could be gone, likely are gone. Uh, That's Scott Frost at Nebraska, Herm Edwards at Arizona State. Of course, Scott Frost, I think the much more likely one to be let go. However, he did just restructure his contract to where, one, the buyout is much cheaper. So maybe that's actually a reason why he could get fired. But two, uh, he restructured it so he's not making as much money. So that could be maybe a, a point in his favor. Last year was certainly a disaster at 3-9, and nine, had eight one-score losses. If you can flip even just a few of those around, you end up going 7-5 and five this year. Maybe you have shown enough improvement that you can keep your job, but we'll see. Herm Edwards, um, the athletic director, of course, Ray Anderson, was his agent before, and they have got a strong, strong tie. I don't know that they're too interested in, in moving on from him. Now, at the same time, you get hit with some NCAA stuff, et cetera, or you get to a point where you can't find anybody that's willing to work with you because of the way that you treated those assistant coaches on the way out, uh, which is nothing. Like, Herm didn't do that necessarily. Necessarily. But everybody understands that Herm was involved in this, and yet the other guys took the heat. And it normally does not work that way. Normally doesn't work that way at all. Uh, As far as the fours go, And his ranking on this, four means start improving now. He's got Brian Harson at Auburn as a four. And I might would have Harson at a five. Like, you got to do something because it has already been proven that that bunch at Auburn does not necessarily like him. And they don't like the way that he's going about things. Now, he has picked it up a bit on the recruiting trail, and there is still time to win some of them over. But, I mean, if if you go out and look bad early... I mean, he may not even make it all the way through the season. Dino Babers, uh, this actually, last year, post-game win expectancy for Syracuse, they should have been a six-win team, ended up as a five-win team. That dismal 2020 season that they had, which was not all Dino's fault, but they, they just, this is a tough, tough job. I don't know that they are necessarily ready to get rid of him, especially based on all the rumors of the contract that I've heard. So I don't know that they are going to get rid of Dino, even if he doesn't have a great season. Um, Jeff Collins in in Georgia Tech, I think that probably should have been a five, like not a four. I think, now I I do think with as tough as the schedule is this season, that you don't necessarily have to make it to a bowl game, but you got to show improvement and you got to, you got to win some games. Like you got to, you got to get back to about four or five, eh, let's say five wins. If, If he doesn't make it to five wins, they're going to be in trouble because this is your fourth year. you got to show some kind of improvement. Willie Taggart is a four on here, and I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. Um, Dodd has it on here basically because uh, he settled with one of his former Oregon players that sued the coach and his former strength coach after being hospitalized. Like There was a lot that went on here. Taggart admitted to the drills being excessive in Oregon. Um you know, like he he doesn't have a great record and all that. They did go five and seven last year, and I think they do expect better at Florida Atlantic. But at the same time, I mean, the year after Lane Kiffin won a conference title at FAU, he went five and seven, and then the very next year bounced back and uh, won another conference title. So, you know, I, I don't know that. I don't know. I I don't think that that's something that. Uh, would make him lose his job if he were to go five and seven again or six and six somewhere around there, but we'll see. Uh, he's got Jake Spavital at Texas State. That does make a lot of sense because the way that he has gone about it, he's basically stopped recruiting high school kids and he's only bringing in transfers at Texas State. Uh, Marcus Arroyo uh, at a four as well over at UNLV. I don't, I don't necessarily agree. He started during the COVID nineteen season at a place that was just a dumpster fire. Uh, he's two and sixteen after two seasons, but. They they looked pretty good towards the end of last season. It looks like he's starting to build a culture. I don't think this is a four. I think this is closer to the, than 
I think it's closer to a three. That's what I'll say. I, I think next year is the year where you really got to start paying attention here. Uh, as far as getting warmer, he's got Mike Norvell at a three, Carl Durrell at a three, and Jeff Scott at a three. Uh, these are all guys that started during that COVID-19 season in 2020, didn't even get spring practice really. Uh, Jeff Scott, I mean, I don't even know what we're going to look at. He, he's beaten one FBS team in two seasons. They are 3-18 and 18 at South Florida. Uh, he's got a talented roster this year, so we'll see what happens there. Mike Norvell is a 3. Um, he's 8-13 and 13 in his first two years at Florida State, but the mess that he inherited from Willie Taggart was disgusting. So we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that one. And then Carl Durrell, uh, he's a 3 now. He'll be a 5 going into next year if they don't fire him after this year. I've projected them to go 0-12 this year. They are not projected to be favored in a single game, and the schedule is just abysmal. And what he's done with that roster is not improve it. Like, it has not improved since he's gotten there. It's actually gotten worse. So, yeah, Carl Durrell would be one that I would look out for that's a three that could end up losing his job this year. And then, of course, Mike Norvell, if everything falls apart at Florida State, you could certainly see that happening as well. Uh, but the hot seat rankings... Always ready to get you fired up heading into a college football season, and we are getting ever closer. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.